you know, the, the guys were just absolutely on fire because they just had this opportunity to just pour out all this music that had been trapped inside them for several months. And um, I kind of thought that would might be the case, but it was, yeah, it was like unleashing, uh, uh, well, not hell, but it was like, you know, unleashing a combination of heaven and hell. It was all the things you want, <laughs> you want, it, you want it to be. It was, yeah, it was great, great experience. So welcome to another edition of Being James Bond. As I promised, I'm uh, talking to my good friend Warren Ringham from Cue the Music, who is kicking off his lockdown sessions. And Warren was kind enough to join us on Being James Bond. Warren, what's going on, brother? Hello, mate. How you doing? Good to be here. And yes, as you said, lockdown sessions, the uh, taken over my life for the last few months, I have to tell you. But it's finally... <laughs> They're finally going out. Very exciting times. Nice. And this is now, now I, I know a little bit of uh, what this is. Uh, just the name of it. The lockdown sessions is pretty self-explanatory. But uh, needless to say, we're all in this weird pandemic uh, and it's kind of crippled our our social agenda, our, our ability to socialize and to get out and to experience things. And you kind of came up with a pretty interesting solution. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, so we had our 2020 tour lined up for this year, theatre tour, and we, we were doing our biggest ever tour, actually. And um, when this pandemic, I hate to even say the words, but uh, when it hit, we had everything wiped out. So not only did all of our shows and all of our work uh, immediately dry up overnight. But for our audience, you know, many people are looking forward to seeing us this year and now it's not going to happen. And it looks it's looking more and more likely that it's going to run through most of 2021. I don't really see us being back in theaters properly till 2022, um, the way things looking. So the idea was to, to look at a way that we could do some online concerts, but also do something that we've not ever done before because I didn't really just want to put up a load of more videos of us playing the songs because, you know, we've done that. I mean, we have done that again as part of this and they are the best sounding and looking videos that I think we've ever done. But that was just a small part of it, actually. Um, we did over a hundred tracks, uh, songs and cues from the film. So all sorts of incidental uh, pieces of music from everything from, uh, Doctor No, right up. Well, every single film, in fact, even some from Casino Royale, Never Say Never Again. Uh, so there's there's a bit of something in there for everybody, and lots and lots of great John Barry, David Arnold, uh, George Martin, Marvin Hamlish cues, all sorts in there. It's, it's it's really just so much fun to do, and it, and it's come out really well, I think. Nice. Now, and this is a legit. This is a a literal brand new concert that you just recorded am i right yeah yeah absolutely I, I i have heard a few people think that maybe we're just sort of rehashing you know what we've already done no 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 this is all new stuff i mean i think out of the 12 concerts that we're doing and we're doing two seasons of six we're doing six concerts in 2020 the first two are actually out now um and then the other six will be next year um early next year but uh, the 12 concerts are all brand new footage with the exception of about seven songs that I've remixed uh, versions that we did previously, but everything else like 90 odd tracks that are all brand new recordings. And I would say 50 to 60 of those we've never ever played before, let alone performed uh, and recorded. So this is all new stuff and, and done with a bigger orchestra as well. Our biggest ever band 30 sorry 21 people we had including live strings and the sound was just just phenomenal to be in the middle of it all and it's i think uh, when, when people see it bond fans see it i think and hear it they'll be really uh, pleased with what we've done i think it's we've really captured the authenticity of the of the sound of the original sound mm. uh, yeah i have to agree and i you know luckily i was very i very kindly had a nice little sneak preview mm -hmm. um I and not well, to you present it, of course. You, you're on <laughs> guest compares the first show. I, I was gonna say, not to toot my own horn, but I have to say, 
I love the format that you kind of chose for this. And I know uh, a lot of kind of notables from the Bond community have sort of jumped in and kind of worked with you in terms of presentation. And I know uh, I had a lot of fun doing the first one, which is Honor Majesty Secret Service. And, and I kind of feel like it was sort of like an obvious one for me because, you know, for multiple reasons, uh, it, it was I mean, not only am I just a, a giant Honor Majesty's fan, but I went to the the big 50th anniversary last year, and that's where I saw Cue the Music for the first time live. So talk about, I mean, that, that was the birthplace of me, my relationship with Cue the Music, and just how I kind of became a fan. So it was really fun to be able to do that. And I love what, what we did, where you and I would speak a little bit, talk a little bit about uh, the impetus behind the whole project, what it is, uh, and then about the music uh, specifically and kind of our relationship to it. And I know that you've done it not only with me, but several other, uh, again, notable names from the Bond community. Yeah, I mean, there's, we've, got, uh, we've also got our Bond girls involved as well. So Madeline Smith from Live and Let Die, she's hosting nice. the, the Live and Let Die concert. And we've got probably about seven or eight cues from that film, uh, all sorts like Baron Samadhi's Dance of Death, Sam Monique. We've got um, uh, Snakes Alive, Bond Meets Solitaire. There's all sorts in there. Really great. And then we've got Caroline Munro for Spy Who Loved Me. And of course, she had a very, very small role in Casino Royale, the, the 1967 version. And then we also uh, had Caroline Bliss come in and she's done, or she's going to be doing Living Daylights and License to Kill. But as well as that, yeah, some key people from the Bond community, uh, yourself, Dave Zaritsky, John Williams from JBR, Chris Wright. Um, yeah, so a few people from the Bond community. I really wanted to get um, some of you guys involved because, uh, you know, I've got such a special relationship um, with you, all of you guys. But also mm. it's, it, it, it's, I wanted to make the concerts more than just us on screen knocking the charts out, I wanted to make it a whole experience. So there's lots of kind of bits of trivia and discussion about the impact of the music. And we've got some behind the scenes stuff where I'm, I'm discussing the, the scores with a composer and we're going into a little bit, just a little touch on um, the, the, the techniques of composing and, and how the sounds are created. Um, so it's a, you know, it's a, each concert's about an hour in length, um, probably about 30 to 40 minutes of music and then sort of 20 minutes or so of really good discussion, really interesting, uh, points. And, um, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to do really was just to sort of make it a, a, a real bond fan experience. Mm. And, and it really is honestly. And I, again, I have to say hats off to who's ever doing your video. Cause quite frankly, I was really impressed with, with, with just the, the vivid color um, watching this concert. I love the fact that you can get close up, see the people actually playing, which I kind of feel like, and I, I've said this to you before, that that it really does, it, it's not simply a matter of sitting back and listening, but it really does sort of open your mind up to, to the music and it, and it and it kind of becomes sort of an interactive thing like i, I i've mentioned it before again I, I don't speak the language of music uh so it was sort of like um like when i get to see the actual instruments being played to create what i'm hearing it really does wake me up to the to the arts you know to, to the world of music in, in a way that i never would otherwise yeah i, I think that's the great thing is that the for all of us, for all of our Bond fans that have been enjoying these scores and these pieces for, you know, however many decades you've been a Bond fan for, um, to, to actually be able to see them being performed as well as hear them is, is a different twist, a different experience. And as somebody pointed out today, I think some of these cues that we're doing have probably never, ever been played since they were laid down for the soundtrack. You know, some of them get mm. by orchestra stuff, but you know, a lot of them don't. And certainly some of the David Arnold ones that we do like backseat driver and, you know, the on a magic secret service propeller re remix, those guys, those things have never been played uh, since they were recorded. So um, it's fun to be able to bring that. And, I think what we bring to the party is um, ab above everything else is real passion and enthusiasm and energy um, into the music. Yeah. So as well as getting the, hopefully getting a really authentic sound 
of the original, you just get that little bit of sort of life in it. And I'm not saying there's not life in the original, but it's recorded in a sort of very clinical environment where it's laid down to be mixed into an experience of the whole film. Whereas this is actually taking music out of the environment of the film and performing it uh, on its in its own right. So I think that we try and, and really just give that color, you know, as you said about the cameras, but I think even with the music, the colors are more vivid because, you know, mm. we, we're, we're playing it to perform it in, in its own right rather than playing it to blend into the, the experience of the film. Yeah, and that's a great point. And it's great for us, like as, as Bond fans, like most of us hardcore fans probably have all the soundtracks and we've probably heard them, you know, ad nauseum. And I think when you see it this way, it really is a way to take to get sort of a fresh take on that music, to rediscover it again for the first time, sort of rediscover why you fell in love with this music in the first place. Well, I mean, I hope so. And and I think what I think will be interesting is is how people respond to cues that they didn't or, or soundtracks maybe that they didn't particularly think they liked because for example for your eyes only is one that i think amongst the community is probably sort of more low lower down on on some people's lists but when you see us performing some of those tracks live i'd be very surprised if some people don't kind of come away from that guy and actually that's good fun i mean we had so much fun playing those tracks i tell you they're rock hard to play they really are. I mean, we did, it took a few goes to get it right. Um, that, that, that's one of the harder tracks, soundtracks actually to do. But we did a good few tracks from there, things like uh, Driving the Country, um, Molina's Revenge, Gonzalez Takes a Drive, uh, Runaway, all really hard to play, but great fun, great fun to play. And, and I think mm. the energy and the uh, the ability of musicians going, you know, putting all of that in, in there, I think you'll be hard pressed not to find a new enjoyment out of that soundtrack. I think. I, I completely agree. And I, I think one of the things that, that kind of blew my mind when I first heard cue the music is that you, you guys are able to do pieces of music that were created in say the early sixties that had kind of a, a, a brassy, almost jazzy feel. Then you're able to segue over and do something like, Honor Majesties from the Propeller Heads, which is as modern as you could get. The the fact that you guys were able to do both really blew my mind. I mean, I I kind of felt like I didn't even know that musicians could really do that. Like, I mean, mm. I could go see a band, sure, and and we'll play a song from the sixties, and then we'll play a song from the, the from t the two thousands. But that's different. You guys recreate the sound. And that to me is like, wow, I don't, I, it blew my mind that one band could do that. Well, I mean, how do I answer that without <laughs> this difficult one, isn't it? When someone says something so nice and, you know, I, I think, <laughs> I, I think that ultimately a lot of it's down to the skill of the musicians, but I think as well, it comes from assembling a team of people that love what they do, love the music, will pay you know extraordinary attention to detail of these things but also they're all chameleons in the way uh, that they can uh, that's not the right word but they're all very adaptable at playing lots of different mm. styles and you know the the thing i find when i'm looking for musicians for cue the music is that someone might be recommended to me as an outstanding musician and i look at them and actually they're a phenomenal jazz player or they're a fantastic classical pianist for example or they're a, a brilliant rock guitarist but actually when you bring them into cue the music you've got to be a dab hand at all different genres and styles and that's part of the, of the of the importance of finding the right people that can do all the different styles really really well and that's why I think a, a lot of bands try the Bond stuff and there's a lot of bands out there that dare I say that do it. You know, it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's fine. It's pleasant, but to really do, and this is me as a Bond fan talking now to really do Bond music justice. You've got to be able to do all the different genres to the style and the sound and, and the expectation of that genre. It's not good enough just to, to get it close and say, well, That'll, that'll do. That's close enough. You know, it's got to be absolutely right. And 
I pride myself on Cuban music being that way. And, and so I think all those things combined is why we're able to, to do it. But I mean, it's a hard one for me to, to really talk about. I think it's better when people like yourself look at it and judge it. <laughs> I just enjoy that um, response. You know, I, I said this to you on the uh, on the actual um, concert that we compared and you brought this subject up and I was saying it's it's such a buzz for me to see the reaction from people when they are astounded that we can do you know, odd jobs pressing engagement from Goldfinger and then do mm. backseat driver from Tomorrow Never Dies. And uh, I think we all in the band thrive on that. And that kind of pushes people on to, to do it even better and, and do the best job possible because it's the reward. The payoff is seeing that reaction. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, and I get that too. And, the, you know, again, I always fall back on different metaphors when talking about music. And, you know, one, one of them is, you know, I can, I, I can discuss art a little bit. And there was a, you know, there's a, there's a style of art where that's called photorealism. When you, when you were literally trying to make something look as close to a photograph as possible. Uh, and I, and I kind of find that, but, the, but usually a good artist will put their own touch on it. So, you know, it's not exactly, you know, a photograph because what's, what, what's the excitement in that? And I kind of find that when I, I sort of feel similarly when I see you guys perform, because I am amazed that you you make it very clear. You can re, retool, recraft that same piece of music and make it sound as if you've been transported to a, a, a point in time when it was created and you can do it exactly right. But there's just enough variance. And, and I think it's it's a simple matter of just the, the personal styles of the musicians, possibly, that I also can 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 tell it's a little different. Picking up on an interesting point that you made about comparing it to art, because on a number of occasions in the past year or so, I've been asked to describe cue the music and the sound and the approach and everything else. And I've, I've come up with a few metaphors myself. And I, there was one that I sort of came up with that, that sort of slots in with your art analogy, which is, I think I defined cue the music as like a, a like a real high res definition version of the music, like a modern um, sort of nice <laughs> you know, high res version. And that's almost overexposed. It's so brilliant in the colors that, that, that we are recreating in it. it it's all, I mean, I have a saying with cue the music that, and I say this to musician with cue the music, more is more. You know, whenever you, if you're in doubt, if you're thinking, should I, should I play this a bit louder? Definitely. More is definitely more where, where we're concerned, you know, like I want, I want the passion and the, uh, everyone, when they go on stage with cue the music, it's like, take, just leave everything on stage. You know, I don't mind if there's the odd mistake, you know, which thankfully rarely happens. But if if everyone goes at flat out 100% all the way through, I'll take the odd mistake if it means that we come off the stage. Because the audience feel that, you know, they really do. Mm -hmm. They feel the difference between a 90% performance and a 100% performance. You can't, you can't compare what it feels like when everyone's just giving absolutely everything because that just comes off the stage, you know, and the audience get that vibe and then they give you, they give it back to you because they, they kind of go on that journey with you and they appreciate it. And that kind of pumps you up to, to go on. I mean, we didn't actually have that um, of course this time, because we had no audience in when we recorded this, but it was, it was there because we hadn't played for several months because of this situation. Nobody had done anything uh, together. And so I think everybody was like caged animals ready to get back on stage and play. And, you know, the, the guys were just absolutely on fire because they just had this opportunity to just pour out all this music that had been trapped inside them for several months. And um, I kind of thought that would might be the case, but it was, yeah, it was like unleashing, uh, uh, well, not hell, but it was like you know, unleashing a combination of heaven and hell. It was all the things you want, you want, it, you want it to be. It was, yeah, it was great, great experience. Oh, that's terrific! And so there are, am I mistaken? There are twelve full blown concerts in this series. So there's, yeah, there's two seasons and six concerts in each. So the first six are coming out this year. There, that's two of them are actually up and running now. 
Um, the others are coming online over the course of the next few weeks. And then, yeah, the second season, which we've recorded everything for, but I just haven't finished putting it all together, but that'll be out um, next year. And uh, yeah, the each concert's got a theme. And within each concert, as I say, you've got songs and you've got cues. So, for example, in the second concert, Live and Let Die, that just has just gone out, as well as the theme tune, there's uh, so Baron Samadhi's Dance of Death, there's San Monique, there's Just a Closer Walk With Thee, you know, the, the funeral music. Um, there's uh, Bond Meets Solitaire, Snakes Alive, Trespassers Will Be Eaten, If He Finds It, Kill Him. Um, I've probably missed a couple off as well. So there's... There's all sorts uh, in in each one. Um, just just really, I, I just I think that you know if you're a Bond fan, it's uh, un- unmissable. <laughs> I couldn't agree with that more, and I, I love that. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of fun for Bond fans as I sort of, you know, I, I'm com- I'm I'm thinking in terms of like you know uh, the Metropolitan Opera House, you know the the um, you know people who are in New York uh, get to be patrons of the arts, you know, and they get to be sort of part of that experience. And I sort of feel like this is kind of as close to that as we can get for bond fans, where every so often a new concert comes out, you get your best bottle of wine, you, you sit and you enjoy it and you watch it. Uh, so it, it really is kind of a, just a, a magnificent way to participate and kind of elevate the fandom to, to a whole different level. And again, I'm, I'm very happy to be able to say, I'm a, a patron of, of Q the music and it's, it, it really is just an extraordinary thing to be part of. Cause it really is sort of an immersive experience. Um, and it's pretty sweet because for the price of what probably less than the price of a one normal concert ticket, we get access to the whole season. Is that right? Well, the, the so you can, there's two ways of doing it. You can, you can either purchase an individual concert ticket. So if you just think, I just want to see one or two of the six, you can purchase a ticket for that, which is um, 15 pounds plus uh, taxes, as you say, which is way less than you'd pay if you're attending. I mean, that's the thing. Mm. These concerts, you're basically attending a virtual concert. Think of it like that. So it's you're not coming to the theater, but you are, uh, coming to the concert it's just it's being brought to your home but then yes you can also buy a, a season ticket which is cheaper than buying six individual ones and there's a couple of options with that as well there's different different perks involved with two different season tickets but i mean people can have a look at the details and decide what's what's uh, best for them but uh, it's it's all on our website um cuethemusicshow.com forward slash the lockdown sessions and they can choose the sort of tickets from there really nice but honestly i i've seen the price for the season ticket and i feel like i i would pay much more than that to see a a, a concert in person well, so this I, is something that's going to be very nice and will carry you throughout the, the 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 duration of the series yeah and the thing is as well joe the the deluxe season ticket option actually comes with a downloadable program where you can download it or you can view it online. Um, it's a hundred page, uh, uh, program. It's it's absolutely stunning. And and it was designed and and done by my good friend, Ruben Wakeman, uh, who you were, you well know. And, um, yeah, his work is just astonishing. And I'm so lucky that he's very kindly given his time. But um, you get that as well with the deluxe season ticket. And it's, so that's, I mean, that's that's like a book. <laughs> Lots of articles and quiz and facts pages and loads of photos. And there's even an advert for being James Bond in there. Ah, very cool. <laughs> I think that's reason alone to pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Warren, thank you so much for doing this. And by the way, I know that you're, I, I you know, I, I've been joking with Dave Zaritsky recently. I, I said, you know, I, I, I feel like when something fun happens, he and I sort of become the talk show circuit. So I, I know that you'll be on uh, the Bond experience as well. 
Yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. Always loved, I love getting involved in all the Bond community stuff. You know, one day when Cue the Music's finished, um, I'll be I'll be just back to being a fan, but I'll always, you know, want to do these sorts of things. It's just great fun, you know, any, any way that I can just, like yourself, it's brilliant what you and Dave and JBR and all the other um, guys out there that are contributing content. It's just fun to be part of. And, um, you know, thanks very much to everybody that downloads the stuff and listens to it. And anybody that's watching today, thanks for sitting through this long of me talking. But please come and give the concerts a go. And I should say, if you don't mind, Joe, if people sort of umming and erring and thinking, oh, do I don't want to spend the money, go on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. We've put a whole free preview with a track from each of the concerts. It's about an hour and a half long. And you can watch um, a, a load of music for absolutely free and, and see the quality, the sound, what you're getting, um, and, and then choose if you want to, to come and buy a season ticket. But I promise you won't regret it. If you're a Bond fan, this is the one for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, I'm going to put the, the links uh, to all that in the description. I'll put the links to the to the concert series in the, in the description. So uh, it'll be easy to find. And uh, yeah, I, I think it is absolutely positively well worth everyone's time. Like I said, it's a perfect night at home, bottle of wine, a nice meal and a concert. Not too shabby. Uh, and, and by the way, you said some someday you'll be back to just being a fan. Uh, let's make sure we don't do that until everything gets back to normal and I can get to see at least a couple more concerts by Cue the Music. Oh, that would be brilliant. That would be amazing. Absolutely. Warren, thanks again, brother. Thank you so much, and I'll be uh, talking to you soon. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everybody.